I'm Brandon DeLapp, Senior Solutions Engineer um, at Catchpoint. What I'm going to do now for this next segment is walk through a typical user scenario with, of one of our users. So let's take a look into the day of life of Joe. Uh, Joe is a DevOps manager for a luxurygoods.com, uh, obviously e-commerce uh, retailer. So a little more background on Joe. He's a passionate observability leader. He, he works in a large retail e-commerce company. His bonus is tied to SLOs, as, as Mehdi mentioned earlier, in his previous um, you know, experience at DoubleClick. And he's a California guy, so his favorite in and out order is, is animal style. <laughs> so he wakes up at 7.30, you know, he has his coffee, he prepares for his daily stand-up by checking Catchpoint's IPM uh, platform. However, he wants to make a dentist appointment at 10.30 a.m. And since he does, does live in California, obviously people understand the traffic issues. So there's a little bit of concern there uh, when Joe was waking up uh, this morning. So he logs into Catchpoint. He takes a look at his stack map that was created and through auto discovery within Catchpoint using his synthetic tests. And it's essentially a live view of your digital service and its health in the internet stack. Applications rely on several different layers and services within those layers. Whether it's a DNS layer, maybe you have multiple providers, maybe you're using your cloud provider like AWS, Route 53, and then you also potentially have NS1 or another DNS provider to, to quickly be able to, to switch over to. Um, on the other side of things, we may have a tag manager like Adobe that's making a bunch of calls out to Facebook, out to DoubleClick, um, out to LinkedIn, things like that, that um, unfortunately users, right, they don't understand that. They don't know that you don't have control over those. And it's very important to be able to have this at a glance view into, all right, are any of those providers at any given moment causing an issue on my end user experience? The most important thing here is Joe detected an issue. He came into his internet stack map and he sees that there are incidents being fired off and some alerts being fired off as well throughout his uh, internet stack. Now, his company makes $10 million an hour, right? So every hour, every second um, that a user can't check out, that is impacting the bottom line uh, for his all right, let's fast forward a little bit, about a minute or so. He then cl clicks into Internet Sonar. As Mehdi showed earlier, this is a global heat map of all third-party services that uh, we are monitoring and we are detecting if there are any events uh, going on. So he wants to answer that question, is it just us or is it the entire world or a specific region that may be experiencing this issue at this point in time? Um, you can click to dr drill down into these different outages that we are detecting for more information. What type of failure is it? Is it DNS lookup? Is it a response timeout? Is it a connection failure? And more importantly, do the vendors know about it? So we're going to go ahead and also include status page updates if the vendor uh, obviously posts that update. But you'll see that alongside our telemetry to let you know that the vendor is working on it. And potentially, you don't need to reach out and, and bug that vendor because they already know about it and they're starting to work on it. Let's switch over and check the impact on our real users. So what you see here is a global heat map um, of all of your users interacting with your sites using real user measurements. So a JavaScript tag on your site, um, it's, it, it's loaded asynchronous, so it's not impacting the actual load time of your site, which is extremely important. Um, and this also allows you to compare uh, business indicators, so page views, conversions, uh, bounces, right? All of these more business type metrics and correlate that with the performance metrics that, that we are capturing. Now we want to drill into, well, let's verify the reach and the network performance here uh, for that end user. Obviously, we all know slow is the new down. People don't necessarily complain on Twitter for a complete DNS failure page, but they complain if the page is taking 20, 30, 40 seconds to load or to log in, for example. Um, this view allows you to pinpoint um, all BGP routing issues in, in one dashboard. You don't have to click through multiple dashboards. We have what is called a smart board that is a, a, an AI-powered um, visualization tool that allows you to quickly sift through those different layers, whether it's the web layer, whether it's the network layer, or the BGP layer. Is that customizable based on the, the user behind it, behind it, looking at it? 
Yeah, so it's customizable from a sense of um, what are you testing, right? So are, what page are you testing? Where are you testing from? Uh, but the view itself takes all that data and, and automatically uh, places it into that specific layer. Can you touch on the DNS testing a little bit more? Because, I mean, there's never been an outage that was related to DNS. Ever. Never. It's never been that. <laughs> yeah, I like to... <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I've, I've been at Catchpoint for 10 years, and it's still the same thing. DNS is the first impression of any digital service that you use. And unfortunately, uh, if you don't know that, and you're an end user, right, you're going to blame that application that you're accessing, when in reality, it could be a network issue, it could be their DNS provider, so that's, that's something that we like to say so as a company. We, we do two types of DNS tests. One is what we call a DNS direct, where you can specify a particular DNS server and we can keep hammering it for, hey, what do you know about this domain? What do you know about this domain? Then the one, my favorite, is what we call the DNS experience, which is the ability to say, okay, you don't know where Joe.com is, go and look up where Joe.com is. Mm -hmm. And so you go through the entire lookup as if I, I was a brand new user with zero, with nothing in my cache, to basically go through the entire process of doing a lookup, which sometimes is 15 layers, oh, yeah. literally yeah. 15, 20 layers, and you can say, okay, which one breaks? So, so those are the two types of DNS uh, tests that we have. Okay. Excellent. Um, the next step would be to inspect those user journeys that, that you're monitoring. So out of the box, Catchpoint has 40 different synthetic monitors. I know that may seem a lot. Um, you might think of synthetic monitoring just being a simple ping or a simple web check. It's a lot more than that. There are a lot of different protocols that you must test individually from the entire picture or that entire end user experience, like a, a Chrome page load, so that you can detect more quicker or quicker, right? So. If it's, a, if it's an SSL issue, you have a dedicated SSL monitor that would alert and notify you of that issue so that you don't have to go and bug other teams, you know it's a certificate issue or a performance issue related to that specific provider. So, for example, SSL, um, we have a customer that has over 40,000, we have a customer that has over 40,000 uh, domains that they monitor mm -hmm. in Catchpoint for SSL expiration. Because one of the, the same way DNS, right? The, one of the biggest things that we see more and more since we've all switched to encryption everywhere is, oops, the SSL certificate expired or we failed to upload the new certificate to Akamai or to another CDN. And now we are down for two days and people are complaining. And then there is a psychological impact, right? Your SSL is having issues. I don't know if I'm going to put my credit card in that company's <laughs> website anymore. Yeah. You know what I mean? So yeah. performance sometimes, uh, like these type of things have a negative impact on the brain of the users. Um, real quick, out of your synthetic, yes. um, you have API listed there. Yes. Um, are you seeing a lot of uptick on interest? Because I mean, at you, this point, API economy, like yeah. you want to talk about AI. We had a podcast yesterday, we were talking about API. Uh, AI. Yeah. In my mind, API, API, yeah. API is the Just target. Yeah, we, we, we had this webinar a few years ago. called 60% of traffic on the internet yeah. is API, API calls. This, yeah. Our API test is, is, go, is growing by 3,000% year over year. Oh, well, yeah. Like I, a, I call it planet, planet of the apes problem. Literally, <laughs> that's, planet that's of the literally, APIs. Yeah, it's literally, <laughs> that's the thing we're dealing with, this planet of the apes uh, issue, because... Uh, plan yeah, Planet of the API. Yeah, Thank you, yeah. It's like I have the movie after this. That's all right. Movie just, it's, <laughs> right. A new, uh, it's, it's a new. It's a new thing, right? But uh, so we 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 kept we keep on building more capabilities there. But the ability to do multi-step transactions at the API, make an API call, get the results, store it in a variable, reuse it for another API call, etc. Is some of the things we we can do. So yeah, because the responsiveness of an API. Yeah, I mean, that's it's, easy. You know, being on a vendor side and providing an API is actually really costly and it's yes. very difficult to scale, especially as your product becomes more popular. Um, knowing where those latencies are, I yeah. think, is you know really incredible for the users yeah. to be able to say, all right, well, I mean, even as if I'm wanting to utilize an API and be able to test against Correct. that API, I mean, is that something customers are able to do to say, hey, we're utilizing the x.com API or we're utilizing Correct. Amazon API. Yeah, so for example, we have a lot, I mean, there's the big players, there's RPG, there is MuleSoft, right? So yep. we see a lot of 
templatization, if you want, mm -hmm. of like, hey, just reuse the same okay. new soft template and whatnot. And that's one of the things we actually uh, did with Google. Uh, we co-innovated uh, uh, recently on this thing called templates, which is like out of the box, some of out of the box Google monitoring, and we're taking that to MuleSoft and other companies as well in the future. Okay, that, well, that's excellent. I mean, especially from the app dev standpoint, yeah. oh, because you know you can you know, actually, die by an API. We have this great sneaker company. Uh, so instead of doing the web, the traditional web monitoring of like hey Chrome, uh, like a, either Selenium or another mm -hmm. test test type of that nature. They basically identified that in order to buy a pair of sneakers, you have to hit about 30 API. Yeah, there are 30 API costs. It's like, hey, check the size, check the color, check the inventory, which warehouse has it. There are literally 30 API costs, and that needs to happen in two seconds because you are waiting on your browser to mm -hmm. click and buy, right? And when there is a drop, and you have That's a teenager right. that is uh, trying to get uh, his thing, right, his fix, it's insane. <laughs> so you have two seconds, right? And so there are 30 API calls to make that purchase experience happen. So they, what they do now is they just do API monitor. Right. And that's the entire user journey. Well, and also with shared services that are being provided, you know, one of the greatest examples that I like is this, the transformation at Target where they're right. like, you know what, instead of each, the website having yeah. its own thing, yeah. and they're like, Create shared services, and you know, that's what every company is doing, right? Okay. Every no, company is building API services yeah. to to the other engineering teams. Like, hey, I have the shopping. Here is the shopping API. Here is the shipping API. Here is the yeah. banking logging API, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Yep. Spot on. Love it. Excellent. Sorry, Perfect. Man. No, no worries. <laughs> Drilling into the API clients in the next step here. So keep in mind, it's only been two minutes and 45 seconds, and Joe's already gone through all these different layers. He knows, he knows what's causing the failure. He knows, he knows the severity of the impact through the RUM data. The last step here would be to inspect those internal API clients. So whether you have those API calls being um, tested within Catchpoint or leveraging our tracing, you have the ability to check the service health of those API endpoints. More importantly, from where they're being initiated, right? Some APIs live from the client side. Some APIs are you know, from the back end, and they don't leave the cloud. So being able to have the, the node presence that we have on those consumer ISPs, as well as the cloud providers, you have the ability to, to, to mirror <laughs> and, and test both. Um, and going into the application stack. So with our tracing feature through OpenTelemetry, you can now go ahead and click into a view similar to this, where we're actually tracing every individual call or web service call from the application perspective, you know, database calls, web service calls, and we'll be able to let you know exactly, well, what happened in that instance or in that synthetic event. So you're not looking at it from, okay, my end user's perspective, but you're looking at it from the synthetic coming in perspective on an ongoing basis, 24-7, 365, regardless of your end users are actually shopping on your site. And of course, you then want to communicate the findings that you do find to the development team. And so that they can quickly fix the issues and improve and ensure that that issue doesn't happen um, in the future. After that, you obviously need to do a post incident communication. Um, it's important to be blameless, right? Um, go ahead and improve if it's something that maybe was a gap in your IPM monitoring strategy. CICD, right? Put that back in the fee feedback loop, implement that the next day so that if this issue occurs again, you won't get impacted by it uh, severely. Joe then, four minutes in, hops in the shower, goes to make his, uh, his dentist appointment on time. Uh, the next step would be then to notify the executive um, leadership team or st strategic leadership team, let them know what happened, how big was the problem, what are we doing in the future to fix this, right? Adding it to our IPM uh, strategy. And then last but not least, um, again, touched on this a little bit, but you want to be blameless, right? It, you don't want to blame the development team. You don't want to blame the network team. You want to work together the to DNS ensure... The team is okay. <laughs> the DS, DNS team <laughs> never does anything wrong. Never. <laughs> so you want to work together and, and, and be able to improve and, and expand your, your monitoring portfolio so that, again, no one gets blamed, right? And everyone can have a good shopping experience on, on luxurygoods.com. And then um, we also touched on, oops, sorry about that. 
We also touched on web page tests. So once you pass the findings onto the front end dev team, they can leverage web page tests to perform experiments, look at the opportunities that it's telling them um, to be able to potentially fix and improve on. Uh, if you could real quick, yeah. like with the web page test, I, I understand it's an acquisition. I know how acquisitions and integration takes time and easy. Like, where are you on creating like a seamless experience from? Yeah, yeah that's like, a great question. hey, we're we're going to synthetic test yeah. this API. We're going to bring in. Mm -hmm. We want to understand what that latency is. So the, this and how's how does it impact right. our web? So, uh, the web page test was an open source product, and uh, my promise to Pat was. I won't mess with that, and I'm going to keep that promise. So webpagetest.org is still there. Okay. We're, still, we're still developing, we're still enhancing, um, but uh, we are also incorporating webpagetest inside of Catchpoint. So I think it's this past release, yeah. right? Yep. We went GA, where our customers, our Catchpoint customers have access seamlessly in one portal, access to the same capabilities as webpagetest. There is no going into two separate places. It I took was, us I, a little bit. Longer. I was not teed up to tee that up. Yeah, so. no, but, uh, but thank you for that. Seriously, yeah. it just happened last last week. Yeah, that congratulations. That That's release. awesome. It took us, you know, when, when somebody tells us, oh, it's going to take six months, it takes usually twice as long. It took us a little bit longer. I remember the guys at Google when they bought DoubleClick said, yeah, six months in, you guys will be all on the Google stack. It took six years. <laughs> um, so it took a little bit longer. We had some, uh, some, uh, you know, it's like a construction, you open the drywall, and it's like, oh crap, right? Uh, I have to do the plumbing again. So, but we're done there. And so our customers have a seamless experience. I'm a big believer <laughs> in like one UI, one everything for our customers.